and teaching impulse and change of momentum formulas to A-level students, always start with a blank piece of paper. Always start as well with a line. So here we're going to have our title at the end of the lesson. If we start off with a computer screen or a jam board or um, an overhead projector or even a whiteboard full of writing, it's daunting straight away to your A-level students. So we're going to start by drawing a football. Uh, okay, it's only a circle, but if you call it a football, it becomes interesting. And we're also going to draw a foot that's just about to kick it. Now, suddenly the physics has become interesting because people kick footballs. We're going to compare this with the same leg, if we can get the hairs in the right places. It's always good to have a little bit of humour on your diagrams so that we have reality-ish, cartoony. We're going to consider that with kicking a rock. Now, the football and the rock are both heading towards your foot, and your foot is heading towards the football and the rock. Now I've drawn the rock smaller so that we can have them be both the same mass. Because if you're going to kick a rock, the first thing that students will say is, don't kick a heavy one. So let's have this be oh, 500 grams. And a rock be 0.5 kilograms. Now, by doing this, we've automatically started the students going, hold on a second, there's something a bit weird here. Yes, we have to change them all to the same units, otherwise we can't compare them. 0.5 kilograms each. So this is meaning that we've involved the students We've got the football. We're doing physics that matters to them. Real physics and for the exams. And also, we've caused a, caused a rumpus by doing something mm, that's unhelpful and hopefully we'll get hands up and students saying what we should do as an alternative. Yes, everything should be in kilograms or in grams. Otherwise, the formulas don't work. Uh, lots of the formulas don't work. There are some that do. So, so now we're going to say to the students, what's the wrong with rocks? Put your hand up, what's wrong with rocks? And so then we're going to get um, words like hard and strong. And I'm going to put in tough. I'm going to add words to the list that the students comes up with. And us being scientists, would like words to have meanings. And hard means does not scratch. For instance, diamonds. So, is this a problem with our rock? Is the problem with the rock the fact that it does not scratch? Mm, no. Uh, I mean, it is harder than leather footballs. But the fact that it does not scratch is neither here nor there. Not helpful. So, okay, another one that students will come up with, possibly will get hard and then knock it down. And then other students would tell us, well, strong. Well, strong wings does not break. Easily. Okay, so strong is mixed up with Young's modulus. Young's modulus is the easiest one to say. If it's got a high Young's modulus, it's got high strength. Young's modulus, so it doesn't break. That's not really the difference between a football and a stone. Kicking them, one being better than the other. It's nothing to do with hardness. It's nothing to do with strength. 
And then I might have to say to the students, what about the word tough? What does that mean? Does, well, see, a tough thing, like a, a, a bridge, you want a bridge to be tough. You don't want to drive across a bridge and it's all elasticy, bendy. Um, uh, uh, yeah, you don't want to drive across a bridge and it goes from bridge to bridge. That's not very helpful. Does not bend easily. Yeah. So, uh, oh, does not bend easily. Now, there's an important thing with the stone. Footballs do bend when you kick them. They're sort of boingy, boingy, bouncy things. They can squash and deform. Does not bend, does not deform. Because, uh, oh, here we go, deform. Because, you know, footballs don't really bend. So let's make bend change into deform. And now we're taking the students on a journey. A journey from football versus rock to get us to the science. And you're involving students, you're getting them their words involved, you're bringing in different parts of physics and explaining each as you go. We try to keep it all down below like 10 minutes so they can do some of themselves. So now what matters? Okay, so what hurts? Okay, we, we don't want, this one's gonna hurt. What physics concept, I mean, hurt is obviously a bi biology thing. What physics thing is to do with hurt? What things hurt you? Um, while punching a pillow, not hurt. Punching a wall, hurt. So it's definitely to do with, does it easily deform? And, well, if you punch lightly, then not hurt, even if it's a wall. If you punch with lots of, what's the word I'm after here, hands up, force. Lots of force equals hurt. Yes, I mean, hey, you can break your bones and stuff. Uh, kicking a rock, you can break bones in your toes. Uh, steel toe caps, please. There we go, let's make this guy at least so he's, so there's this steel toe cap. At least he's not going to break any toe bones. And this guy doesn't need a steel toe cap. In fact, he doesn't even really need a leather boot anymore. Because balls are now plastic rather than leather. Okay, so now we've got our first physics word. Force. Let's put it over here. Because we're going to need an equals in order to have an equation. Okay, so now we've got the ball and the rock both coming in at the same speed. So let's get a reasonable speed. I don't know, um, like two meters per second. That seems reasonable. Two meters per second. You could have said one, um, but two and, and five are much better numbers to deal with than if they were both one. It's not so interesting. It feels the maths doesn't really have much flavor. Give it flavor. Okay, so now it's interesting. And so, right, what am I going to do with the mass and the speed? Now, hopefully you're going to be doing this after they've done their GCSEs, and they're going to use mass and speed to get momentum. F equals mass times velocity. Now, that's good. We're going to take all the momentum away from the football and we're going to kick it at two meters per second away. Okay, so we stop all the velocity, velocity being a vector, and we're giving it a same momentum but in the opposite direction. So, let's go, plus is in that direction, minus is in that direction, uh, M, U, and then we talk to the class about why we don't use U and V, minus M, V, 
So this will end up being 2MU because not only are we going to stop this ball, but we're going to give it the same speed in the opposite direction. But I want to change that even further because, you know, it's not always going to be exactly the same. So we're going to put change in momentum. And now we need to discuss with students what symbol you're going to use for change. And hopefully they've done some A-level mathematics as well. Change in momentum. And it's kind of a soft P. Not quite a row, but a soft P. Change in momentum. Now what's happening over here? Obviously the force of your foot is hitting it. We still haven't got the deform part of this. Well, see, when a foot is hitting a football, the ball deforms around the foot. It looks like a Pac-Man now, but you get the gist. The ball bends, whereas the rock does not bend. And this means the contact time between the foot and the football, much more contact time. Oh, what symbol are we going to use for time? Hopefully everyone's going to be okay with T. Uh, is this going to be a plus, a times, a divide? I don't know. More force. Um, more force means more hurt. Um... Less time means more hurt. So because, let's rearrange this, force equals change in momentum over time. Okay, now we're getting going. All right. If you want lots of hurt, you want it going towards you very fast with high mass. Let's put mass times velocity. If you want it to hurt a lot, you want it to go with high, lots of mass, going lots of speed, very small time of contact between your foot and the object. You want it not to bend. You want it to bounce off like a snooker ball does. Ow, hurty, hurty. And that's how you get lots of force and lots of hurting. Obviously, with football, we make them as light as possible. Uh, the velocity, you know, hey, that's down to the skill of the players and stuff. And we have it deformed. That's why we make it out of leather and plastic with a bladder inside filled with air so that it takes a long time in contact with the foot. That's the difference between rocks and footballs. Now, we need a word for this because we've got change in momentum. We need something, an I word, that means force times time. And it's going to be the oof effect. Uh, and, okay, now we're gonna ask for students, oh, before we put that eye up, we should be asking students what force times time is called. Because we need a single word for it, it's used lots. And so they, they might come up with the oof. It's the oof required. Force times time. The more force you have, the more time you have, the more you change something's momentum. And then, of course, we put in the. Uh, we see if anybody knows the word. We didn't want it up here before everyone's on the journey with us. If we'd have put this on the top of the page, at the very start of the lesson, you'd have. Probably everybody going, oh, that's a new word. I've never heard of it before. I don't understand, Mr. Stevens. No, impulse. Always make sure that everyone's with you with not only the equation, but what it is about. It's the oof. And then put the technical word in. It's, it's easy now. It's impulse. There we go. So let's put impulse. And because we've built up the equation, it's more likely to be in your students' heads when they need it. And at this point in the lesson, 
You say to all your students, right, make some more impulse, change of momentum, uh, real life things that's not to do with footballs and rocks and do the calculations and the best ones we'll put on the board and do for homework or do in the class if there is time. And we'll see what people come up with. And I'll go around the class and help them out with, you know, car crashes into wall, stuff like that. Um, crumple zones mean that there's lots of time when a car crashes and therefore giving less force on the person. So therefore, you know, less dead. So it's very important. And, uh, okay, momentum with car crashes. Try to have a light car. And don't go over the, go too fast. You know, obviously you'll, you'll survive more if you're not going too fast. Cool. That is my lesson on impulse equals change in momentum. Bye!